There we go. People are starting to participate. As you see, this is a live word cloud. So in real time, we are creating this together. And what I really like about this tool is that as more people have the same words, so we see stressed, working, anxious, these words are more prominent because more people have this same answer. Um, so this is wonderful, working. Everyone seems to be focused, stressed, tired, anxious, um, but we're all saying focused on working. And you know, as nonprofit professionals, whether you're in uh, fundraising, whether you're in communications, now is the time to stay focused. And that's a lot of what <clears throat> Julie and I will talk about today. If people are concerned. Yep. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for participating. We're going to keep this going. Um, this word cloud will stay active for some time. Uh, so please keep playing along. This is great. Thank you so much. Wow. I love seeing when people take to. Hi, Abigail. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> That's fine. Is that our friend Abby? Yes. And I'm going to use your example. Um, I'm going to use your example today, Abigail. Um, so what I. So welcome everyone. Um, I've got some slides that I'm going to share. This this word cloud is pretty awesome though. Um, but what I want to encourage you to do is if you have questions because the chat is going to run and just go like nuts, put them in the question and answer. And I should have set it up so that um, you can upvote questions because we're going to try to take all the questions, but we're really going to limit this to an hour because I'm tired and I know Josh has a lot of work to do and all of you have work to do, but what we wanted to do today is, I mean, first of all, we really wanted to come together and ask everyone how they're doing. Um, but what I wanted to do is share some of the amazing things that I've been seeing online and answer some of the most frequently asked questions that I've been getting. Um, Oh, and I was supposed to do this live to Facebook. So hold on, we're going to have to do another intro. I didn't, I didn't do it. Okay, I'm going to do it on my page. That's so awesome, the Mentimeter. I love it. I just love seeing it keep everyone. What else can you do with it? You can do polls and you can do You can do Q polls, a, right? yep. You can do Q&A polls. I, I like to switch between Mentimeter and Slido. Um, Slido is a tool that Julie and I use often in our presentations. Uh, so if you ever have a chance to see us live, and, and unfortunately the Josh and Julia tour this year was kind of cut short by COVID-19. Mm. We had about six or seven different speaking opportunities together that we were presenting as nonprofit nerds. <laughs> if you've never had a chance to check out the nonprofit nerds, that is uh, what you're watching right now. This is our, our Facebook live show that we like to do bring you various helpful information from the world of nonprofit communications, marketing and fundraising, leadership, all things uh, related. And here we have 206 women. This is awesome to see all, all, everyone participating here um, in our that's amazing word cloud. Yeah, that's awesome. I know we were supposed to speak at, uh, I was supposed to speak at NTC yeah. like yesterday. <laughs> and then Pause Icon... Can. Cause can well, icon well us together will be I, icon I, I, um and nato, NATO and plan a plan flee plan a plan social media June. summit right so okay i attempted to make it go live josh on it did. my face yay all right well if you're watching live i did want to do a zoom because first of all i love zoom um and i have been using it a lot, but also I wanted us to share our screens and Facebook is just the worst for that. So we are, so, we're also broadcasting live on Facebook because we hit the limit in my zoom account of 500 registrations. <laughs> so <laughs> we wanted to bring this, uh, and menti.com is free, right? It is definitely free tool. And that's a lot of things too, is in, in the presentations that I give, I like to share free tools that is available to everyone. Cause we all know we have limited budgets. You know, I am a Mac person, so sometimes those tools might skew a little Mac OS or iOS. I'm sorry, Julie always gets on my case about that to, to remember the Android people. Well, there's a lot of Android people. I know, I know. Okay, um, let's get started because we got a lot yes, to do. All right, I'm absolutely. gonna share my screen. Yep. Um, and I'm gonna turn off my video because I think it's distracting. Okay, so. 
I've got some slides for you. This is what we're going to talk about today. Let me know if you can't see. I'm going to try to keep the chat and the questions box open. And if you're asking questions on Facebook, um, we'll be able to see those. Josh will be able to see those. So if you don't know who we are, welcome. And I'll let Josh tell you about himself and what he does in his section of this webinar, which actually is going to be the most valuable because he's going to walk you through a little bit of his strategy as a social media manager at a nonprofit and what they've been doing and a fundraiser. I am um, the founder of JC Social Marketing. I have written several books and my passion is just helping organizations get, I don't know, use digital tools in a better way. And this is kind of an unprecedented time for all of us. So I thought we could come together and talk about how we're doing. So we talked a little, you'll definitely hear my children screaming in the background because I can hear them. So how are we doing? I know that's an open-ended question. I know we talked a little bit about it with the Mentimeter, but I want us to really come together. And actually I've just been seeing some people networking in the question, the Q and A, um, come together and really share what we're working on, what strategies that we're using. Um, how are we, how, where, how are we doing? What are we doing? Are we working from home? Is this your first time working from home? Are you working from home with the kids? Are you like Josh and you are in, are you in your backyard? Right I am now? in my backyard. Yeah, I'm in my... sunny Florida. Um, yep. And yeah, so just where are you and how are you doing and what are you doing? So we really, really like to see that. Working from home, laying on the couch, working from home with my kids. Um, two dogs, taking it day by day. Hi, Kristen. Um, nice backyard, working from home in Phoenix, half staffs working, half teleworking, talking every other director off ledges daily. So some of us have to manage teams and I, I can't even imagine. I mean, I'm learning so much, even though I have, um, let's put my video back on, even though I have worked at home. I've had my own business for 10 years now. I don't have a team of people. Like Josh is probably the closest person I have to like a teammate or like a colleague. Um, but I like it that way. I, I don't want to answer to anyone and I don't want anyone to answer to me. But right now with my entire family home, it's a little stressful. I like to work by myself. So I I don't understand what you're going through if you're managing a team, but actually, you know what, when Josh talks, he'll talk about that because he does work with a team, not manage a team, but he works with a team of people and works in an office and, you know, dealing with all of that. Um, working from home for the first time in Cleveland, Ohio, working from home in Houston. My dogs are loving it. I love it. Yep. Um, managing a team. Oh, yay, Bethany. Hi, Bethany. On Boston's North Shore is where I live. Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm so bummed I can't come to Lincoln, Nebraska for cause camp. All right. Oh, the Boston area. It's going so fast. Thanks, all of you. I just want you to know that you've got this. Okay. It's so cheesy and cliche to say. You've got it. I want to quickly go over my top recommendations for communication during this time period because a lot of people have said, how do I talk to donors? How do I talk to clients? How do I talk to team members? How do I talk to anyone right now? And I think the three things that we need to remember, first of all, everyone is in fight or flight response right now. Um, every single time I turn on my phone, there's some horrible news, something awful has happened. Like the, every, everything's coming at us and we're in fight or flight response. So when we're working or when we're contacting our donors or contacting our supporters, our members, our communities, speaking clearly. So what exactly do you need me to know? What do we need me to know right now? What do I need to know? And concise. Can you cut out anything? Can you cut out those social media follow buttons maybe on the bottom of the email? Or can you cut out the 50 page thing about your mission and all that jargon? Or what do I need to know right now? Be concise, be clear, and above all, really be compassionate. I've seen some communication out there that has been 
um, angry, that has been indignant, that has been bitter. And I understand it because I am all three of those things right now, but you don't want to come off that way to your donors and your supporters who are in crisis right now, like suffering a trauma. All of us are collectively suffering trauma together. So what you don't want to do is say, the governor made us shut down our event and I think we could still have it and the hysterical media and blah, 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 blah. Please, please do not do that. That's only adding to people's stress and overwhelm. Be clear, be concise, but above all, be compassionate. Check in with your community members, your donors, your clients, your staff. Always, like when I write an email now, or I've, I've always done this. Um, I don't remember where I first heard it, probably Michael Hyatt, um, a Michael Hyatt book or something, but I write my email and then I automatically go in and see, did I do a paragraph first that says, hi, how are you? Are you well? So some people don't like that. I try to always start my emails with, I hope you're well. I hope you're holding up. I hope you and your family are well, especially right now. So we need to com communicate clearly and concisely. We also need to be linking to trusted resources. We are the trusted resource for our organizations, but we need to be elevating trusted resources and sharing from resources that we know of. And the recommended resources are CDC, NIH, and your local health department. So if you're sharing information, make sure that it's from a trusted resource. Also collaboration right now is hugely important. And I've been seeing this in the course that I'm running, um, Social Media for Social Good Academy. A lot of the students have written in and talked about how they're collaborating with local associations. Like one of the students, she belongs to this group, Communicators for Women Religious, and they had a members only webinar. And then they reached out to individual members for ideas. And these are actually links to the PDFs if you're interested for how they're dealing. So they created um, almost like a manifesto, like this is how we are going to deal with the pandemic. Actually, I want to show you the, the spiritual bonding one because it's really good. I'm not a religious person, I should say, but I love this. So it's not just hand wash, wash your hands and stay six feet away from people, which are vital and very important. This is more attuned to their mission, you know, collective reflection on the transformation to which we are being called. It's very much about their mission. It's very much about their members. It's very much, it's very clear, it's very concise. So take a look at a couple of those examples. And I have actually yeah, a million more examples. I love seeing like hospices come together, hospitals come together, social workers come together. Um, I love seeing that happen and I want to see more of it. So rely on your associations. This is what they are there for, that membership that maybe you never took advantage of. <laughs> rely on it right now. There's also two resources that, one that I have created, a Google Drive of examples that you can pull from, almost like a swipe file. Um, you can't add to this if you have something you want me to add. I just didn't want it to get like filled up with spam. But I've separated it by social media updates, virtual events, general, you know, direct fundraising appeals, um, how to postpone events, some nonprofits sending activities to do at home. So take a look at all of the examples in there. Send me some if you have them. And then Kindful um, or Lightful, sorry, created this great list, free webinars and trainings uh, for charities and nonprofits. So I think this one you can add to it if you know of a training, but take a look at both of those. I'll be able to give you the slides afterwards. So there's tons of resources out there. Another resource that you should be looking at if you're not already a member, try to find a social media managers group in your vertical. So museums or healthcare workers or social workers, teachers, those are going to be so helpful. I'm a member of the museum social media managers group. Someone added me to the group. It's actually an amazing group. And they are all sharing resources and tools and amazing stuff is happening right now. So I do recommend joining your local Facebook group. All right. So the number one question that I am getting is what should our social feed look like? And this is a very typical question that I would get. You know, we don't want to add COVID-19 content. We're not in the news. Do we recycle old content? I don't want to waste our new stuff. So actually, 
I don't know if I answered this. Okay. So for me, and then Josh, I'd love for you to weigh in too. Um, I think that you definitely want to recycle content that has worked in the past, but I also think you can share some of your new content as well. I don't think every post needs to be about COVID-19. I don't think you want to be not posting about it ever and ignoring it. But I don't know, Josh, what are you guys doing? I know you're going to talk more specifically about it, but what is your advice for people when they're asking, what should the combination be right now? You know, I, everything needs to be mission focused. Yeah. Um, take, stop the screen share just so we can, stop. sorry. I feel okay. weird talking to an empty, there we are. Um, you, you need to stick with your focus. You can't be worried about mission creep, excuse me right now. Um, if your lane isn't, and, and listen, we're all affected by COVID-19 one way or another. We know our operations are going to change. We know our service delivery is going to change. We know our fundraising is going to change. But don't try to insert yourself in the conversation if it doesn't feel natural. Um, you know, they're, Go with your gut. You yeah, exactly. Go with your gut. And you have to understand where does your role play in that. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit more later how, as Susan G. Komen, Florida, you know, we are the first responders to breast cancer here in the state of Florida, but more so how we want to position ourselves right now as a thought leader um, for breast health for women and men as related to COVID-19. Yep, absolutely. Okay, great point. Yep, so all right, go back to your screen share. Yeah, that's okay. It's so easy, so I love Zoom. Yep. Um, second question, how much is too much? So are people too, are people inundated right now? Are they... Is there just too much coming at them and am I adding to the clutter? So I think to even expand on what Josh just said, if it's of value to your audience, then as long as you're being clear and concise and compassionate, I think that you should be sharing it. So I think putting your head in the sand and not sharing anything at all at, for risk of annoying your audience is not the right strategy. But like Josh just said, if it's not relevant, um, go with your gut, go with your gut right now. If it is something that you feel like your audience could benefit from, I just got an email from one of my clients and they said, we want to send out a storytelling email right now. She might be on the webinar. We want to send out a storytelling email, but we just feel like, should we just be talking about COVID-19? And I said, you know, I honestly think that your audience um, and they are a rare disease organization, would benefit from a story that doesn't have anything to do with COVID-19, but has to do with your mission. So you're still talking about your mission. You're still talking about the problem that you're solving, which is really what your donors care about at the end of the day. Um, and then, you know, at the end, maybe offering support saying, we thought you would really like this story in the midst of all of this, but if you need support, call us. So not being tone deaf, it's really hard to walk that line. I don't think that you, I, I also don't think that any of you are posting too much right now. All of my clients think they're post too much and they're going to annoy their, they're going to annoy their donors, they're going to annoy their supporters. But when we see how low organic reach actually is, email open rates actually are up right now and organic reach is up right now because a lot of people are on their screens and they're on their email right now. But I think the key with all of this is just to make it absolutely relevant and make it something that's worth someone's attention. And the worst case scenario is you post a story and people, you get like five clicks on it. I mean, that's really the worst case scenario. No one's gonna get mad at you for posting a really heartfelt, nice story about your work or posting something about your mission right now. I don't think, what do you think, Josh? No, absolutely not. I, I think that now is the time to shine and be that yeah. thought leader in your lane. Um, you know, it's clearly, we, we all, I mean, before as a social media manager and communications director for an organization, we strategize, we plan out, we look 30 days out, we look at our events that are six months down the road and see what does our 90 day communications plan look like? What are all those touches? Right now, I'm working 24 hours at a time. I mean, we are, we are not scheduling stuff out weeks out every little piece where, you know, it's, it's all, how does this content relate to your mission? 
and and how does that make sense so you really need to think day by day because things are changing day by day yes. but once again stay focused to your organization's mission messaging we're going to talk about covid we know yeah. it's going to happen but how does that apply to your supporters and and what you talk and your organization's purpose I think that's so important because especially for you, Josh, I know you, you try to, you try to schedule out a long time in advance and it's really hard to just go day by day. And I do too. All right. So I want to go just quickly through some examples of posts that I've seen that I liked in no particular order. Um, I think it's important right now, especially if you are an organization that is focused on social justice, as probably most of us are, that you know we are talking about um, racism, that we're talking about things in the news as it relates to our organization. This doesn't always relate to everyone. If people are asking you questions, you're getting a lot of questions about the same thing, that's a completely appropriate social media post. Posting your hotline, posting a number for people to call, posting a support email, uh, that's absolutely, completely justified myths, misconceptions, telling people what they can do in their community beyond just what they can do for you. I think that's always helpful. So anytime you can lift, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. That's kind of what I think. But I love this graphic. Think of others, consider your actions, support vulnerable and isolated people. Um, you know, what are some quick and easy ways that people can take action from the safety of their own house? The key is really just to make it relevant to what you're talking about and then be human. So if you don't follow the National Cowboy Museum at this point, and I don't know, Josh, if it was you, but it was the AF Peeps group who I don't remember who it was. Leah, I don't remember. Anyway, someone posted about the National so Cowboy Museum. Tim is and the best. It's, it's all been verified, by the way, that it's all yeah. true and it's all real. So now I think because they're getting, of course, a lot of media coverage, it's not going to be as good. But that's what always happens. Once people get famous, it's not as it's not as good. But follow the National Cowboy Museum because the security guard, because he's the only one in the museum now, he took he's been taking pictures and he's been um tasked by Seth at marketing, who is a real person, by the way, he keeps talking about Seth at marketing, to post pictures just to keep the social feeds going because Seth at marketing is at home, you know, social distancing. So be human, be authentic, try new things, like let other people take over your social media. You know, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be funny and it's going to be relevant and human people are just longing for that human connection i can't even tell you how much they are and then useful valuable information that is relevant to your organization and relevant to your audience how can you add value right now you don't have to make things up to add value if you have something if you have a unique way that you can add value like my the local museum where i live um, they are hosting Princess Elsa or Queen Elsa, or she's not a queen anymore. She's off on her horse somewhere in the ocean, whatever. She's not a queen. I don't know whatever she is. They're hosting Elsa, <laughs> um, at the museum or they're having Elsa's going to be at her house doing some kind of something and they're broadcasting it on their page. So they're, they're leveraging the things that they have and they're adding value. And they also sent out an appeal and it was really well received. Another question is, should we be fundraising right now? And I think absolutely. So you don't want to do fundraising that is tone deaf. Um, but I, I really liked these two. I saw these two ads in my feed and they both came up. And first of all, St. Baldrick's, this is the month for St. Baldrick's head shaving festivals. Like whole schools get together and people shave their heads in the auditorium and everyone donates money and they raise millions of dollars and this is their big month they do these the week of saint patrick's day which is really when everything went to hell um and i think that what happened was that they pivoted and i started seeing these pop up a few weeks ago and i think they pivoted to the virtual head shaving and they made it a thing and they said this is our thing now and they made all their messaging very consistent 
their Facebook, their email, their website, their Twitter, everything is talking about virtual head shaving. So it's very consistent. And I think it's something that they are going to implement even when we can all get back together again and do fundraisers together. And Volunteers of America, if you're doing fundraising that is authentic and you're raising money for something that, it, I mean, all of us, our programs don't stop. Our missions don't stop. Like the diseases that we're fighting are not just all of a sudden taking a back seat, right? Poverty is not taking a back seat. So think about how to make it relevant. And there's lots of examples in that Google Drive folder of fundraising appeals. And then of course, thanking, 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 thanking and being extra grateful right now um, is very important. Making a point to call donors, making a point to email donors, put things on social media, very, very important to do. Um, I think that's important. I love what Amira did with taking these little quotes from their donors. I lost my job, but I hope my small donation helps Amira fly through this storm. It's very, it's really impactful. Using Facebook Live. Now I actually wanna do an entire whole webinar about Facebook Live, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. And Josh is gonna talk about how they're using Facebook Live. So the key with Facebook Live, this is a question that I got, how long should it be? And then um, I have some, some tips for Facebook Live, but a lot of the questions I get are how long, you know, how far in advance should I announce it? Um, does it stay on the page? And is this something I would announce via constant contact? So definitely for number two and number four, yes, announce it. I would announce it at least a week in advance. I would send out an email. I would use all of your social media channels to do it. And then for number three on this page, once it goes live, it does stay live on your page. And then you have it as an MP4 file. You can download, you have it, you can embed it other places. You can do other things with it. So once the live stream ends, you do have that file. In terms of how long to talk, I always recommend at least seven minutes and I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. So this is a great way to promote a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live. Just make sure you tell people that it's going on. If you're changing things to virtual events, if you're changing an event to a Facebook Live, let people know, let people know the dates, let people know the times and make sure you have the time zone on there as well. You can also add the donate button to your Facebook Live if you're doing a giving day or if you're doing a fundraising event that's turned virtual, if you have Facebook charitable giving tools. Um, and just giving updates, giving simple updates as to what is going on. That is the best use of Facebook Live, I think. Um, this is a great example of a school that turned an event that was supposed to be an in-person event into, um, this is a YouTube Live actually. So you can broadcast from Zoom to YouTube and to Facebook Live, or you could, wherever you have the most, the biggest audience. Um, and in terms of go, how long to go live on Facebook, I mean, I guess it totally depends, but what I've heard as a good frame of reference is when you go live for seven minutes, in, when you first go live, your A-list fans, your most engaged fans are gonna get a notification or people that have signed up for notifications when you go live. After seven minutes, I've heard this from Mari Smith, from Brian Fanzo, from other people that do live streaming, your B-listers will get notified. So that like second tier of fans, I don't know if it keeps occurring every seven minutes, but that's what I've heard. So I do recommend having a plan to go live for at least seven minutes, maybe 10, just to get that critical mass of people. Make sure you're monitoring comments, make sure you're monitoring questions, um, and make sure that you are following up with people after the live. If you say you're gonna send a link or you're gonna answer a question or you're gonna share a resource, just make sure you follow up after. Um, all right, so I only have a few more slides, but Abigail um, Brower, who has been on the Nerds before, um, she talked about how Second Story started a podcast. She actually had a really awesome idea that um, she said I could share with all of you. They created a COVID-19 task force, and this is the what's on their website, and this is the email that they sent out, so you can just take it, swipe it, and add your stuff in um, as you need to. So this group is to 
promote what they're doing, to promote their needs. Um, it will receive updates as they come in. They'll leverage their network so it's very clear what they're gonna be doing. And I think this is a great idea for people that wanna help, that might not be able to donate a lot of money right at this time, but they, they want a quick and easy way to help. So this is the email that she sent to me. It's on the website as well. You know, our most immediate needs. It's very clear, it's very concise, um, and it's very compassionate. I hope you and your families are doing as well as possible under these challenging circumstances. Um, just like share, sharing and showing compassion for your audience. And then of course, thanking people. So this is the social media update about the response. So I'm sure the program is going really well. She did say it last count, um, and I can't see the chat anymore. So Abigail, if you're in here, she did say at last count, she had 150 people, which I think is amazing. And then my very last slide is my recommendation. People are asking me, what channel should I focus on? What channel should I focus on? Well, I, if you have the ability to do Facebook Live videos, definitely be doing Facebook Live videos. But YouTube, so this, is, this could be an opportunity for organizations to really double down what they're doing on YouTube because people are searching YouTube every single day. It's the number two search engine owned by the number one search engine. Oops. So take this opportunity if you have, I don't think we have any downtime, but if you are looking at a place that's going to reach the maximum number of people, I really would recommend Facebook and, and YouTube at this time. Not to say any of the other channels are not worth it, but I discovered a free tool, uh, TubeBuddy. So I use the free version of TubeBuddy. If you sign up for it, every time you post a video, it's going to give you a score. It's going to give you some keywords to use. It's amazing. It's an incredible analytics tool to improve what you're doing on YouTube. And then also read this article from Mark Horvath about how he used TubeBuddy to dramatically improve his channel and his views because the titles didn't make sense, the captions weren't full of keywords. I mean, he really walks you through how to do it. So take some time, I would really take some time to add your existing video content into YouTube, tweak your channel. People are gonna be spending a lot of time on YouTube right now and they're also gonna be searching a lot for different things on YouTube. So that's probably my top um, recommendation there. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over to Josh. Am I going to stop my share? Okay, do you have anything to add with what I just said, or you want to go ahead with what you have? I'll just jump in with what I have. Uh, the flurry of comments in the chat and questions, oh, yeah. it's like, can I keep up with? Um, there's one I did see from Melissa Barron. She asked, are there benefits to doing Facebook Live from your main page versus from within the Facebook event? What I would recommend is create an event for your Facebook Live, and that's what yes. we've done for Komen, and then that's what I'm going to touch on here in a few we did minutes. That for today, too. Yep. So you create the event from your page. That way, you can then invite people to the event. You then can um, broadcast to your page, and then share that broadcast into the event. That is that's kind of the workflow that I would recommend for that. All right. So we're just going to jump right back over to. Oh, wait. And Abigail said um, 150 people. The response has been crazy. It's going very well. We're also sending a follow up today to encourage people to host their own fundraiser if they're interested. A lot of people have asked us about monetary needs. A great opportunity for us to ask. Awesome. Don't be afraid to ask. People want to help. They want to help. And Absolutely. yes, I'm going to send the recording. Can I pin something to the top? I'm going to send the link to the recording in the slides and I'm going to mute myself right now. So for those who tuned in late, uh, we were doing a little word cloud group activity. Uh, you can go to menti.com, entering code 811035 and answer, how are you coping with COVID-19? Uh, we all know that we're in a new world. Uh, everything has changed. As I said before, the way we're going to be operating as nonprofits are changing. The way we're going to be communicating with donors is going to change. The way that we're asking for money and direct service is going to change. Um, you need to have a mindset of not a 30-day strategy, but a 30-hour strategy almost at this point. 
uh, everything is changing, everything is in flux, and the content and events that you may had planned 30 to 60 days out from now, that's gonna change. You can't really be having that same strategy anymore. Um, so how are you gonna pivot? But most importantly, how are you gonna stay mission focused during this time sharing your content? So we're gonna look at what Komen Florida, um, just a little bit of background myself, I'm the director of mission at Susan G. Komen Florida. We cover 64 or 67 counties here throughout the state, providing resources, providing answers, providing um, financial support to women and men throughout the state. Uh, you know, it's breast cancer is often thought about as a, a disease for women with one in eight being diagnosed. In men, it's one in 833. Uh, however, the mortality rate is much higher because it's an older gentleman and we don't get, you know, annual mammograms. So we're not checking ourselves. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of times it is uh, diagnosed too late. So the first thing that we did with Komen was we um, took on our, our website, and this is Komen Florida's website. Um, you know, we all have those slider images at the top, and we know that, you know, at most people are going to view one, two, maybe three. Um, so the first one we did, we, we created our initial slider being coronavirus, COVID-19, and breast cancer. Um, we have one per hour. Um, appeal campaign that's going on right now. So we created a completely separate um, donation campaign, completely separate uh, fund for it so we can track those dollars for COVID-19. And then what women and men need the most right now, um, it's financial assistance. So we are, you know, one of the things we do is be able to invest in our community, not in just uh, local health organizations, but being able to make small financial assistance grants. So on our site, like I said, we set up this COVID-19 page because everyone wants to know what's pertinent information. So we created um, an FAQ uh, landing page here on our site, more, more than just related to coronavirus, but how is it pertinent to breast cancer? So if you're a health organization, if you're a, a you know, education feeding, how is this uh, pandemic affecting your organization and your operations? Uh, so that is why we really focus on this. More so, what are some additional resources that are available out there? Um, and then here at the bottom, um, I updated this last on March 23rd. This is kind of pulling in from our blog section. So a lot of content as well I'm sharing as blog posts, but I want to have it all archived here. Um, so as you see, created a, URL, a vanity URL, comanflor.org slash coronavirus, something easy to be able to share on social. Uh, but at the same time, you know, here we have a, a podcast that HQ um, Komen headquarters put out as well. So you want to be relevant sharing content that's pertinent to your community. Um, as I said, we have on our community news section, so all really benefit um, content that's beneficial to my community that I'm talking about. You know, one of the big things that Komen came out with is that they made a suggestion um, that anyone who's non-symptomatic to delay their screening. I mean, that is huge news for a Breast cancer organization that is the second largest invest, uh, has made the second largest investment of over a billion dollars in breast cancer research, only second to the federal government is telling you not to go get screenings now. That is how dire the situation is with COVID-19 right now. So we, once again, as the first responders to breast cancer, need to be seen as that thought leader. So for me to be able to put out this content is really uh, pertinent, more so than just on our website, also on our social channels. Uh, so we have really pivoted all of our content strategy uh, relating around um, COVID-19, but more so, how is it staying mission focused? So on our page, um, you know, as you see, we updated our, our cover photo um, to be more related uh, to what is happening right now. Um, you're getting behind the scenes look here and close all these. So this is a post because um, we are we are asking for money right now. Um, it, it is still necessary. Um, this all ties back. So we sent out um, an appeal, and once again, it's a storytelling. So we're talking about Maria, this patient here, um, and it's tying it back to what is a struggle that our patients are seeing. Well, it's a financial um, issue, uh, and we are asking you to give. So we created a you know a landing page for people to give, but at the same time, staying focused with our messaging. Uh, so we did a Facebook Live, and now is a great time for you as an organization to really go all in on Facebook Live. We're all going to be working remotely. We're all going to be connecting with people remotely. So how can you put together content that's beneficial for your audience um, at the same time be able to provide something that's really, really exciting and engaging? Um, so for example, we have a Facebook Live that's coming out on Monday. Um, and I'm going to close this. 
So, um, you know, talking about how the importance of exercise uh, tied around uh, breast health. Uh, so we are doing a Facebook Live with a Zumba instructor. Um, she's up in Virginia. I'm someone who's tied to her organization and be able to invite people in. So we're sending out targeted email communications. So I'm going to turn off my chat if people keep wanting to talk to me. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, but in addition to just what is necessary for your body, we're also looking at ways what is necessary for your mind. Um, so we hosted a Facebook Live earlier this week as well, talking about mental health and self-care in the age of COVID-19. We did one, um, this was a really popular one that we did last week, that was with um, our executive director and the director of the um, Breast uh, Institute at Good Samaritan Medical Center where we're housed. Um, and you know, this has had great engagement as well, because now is the time for you as an organization to really push yourself forward as that thought leader. Use the tools available to you um, to do so. So how are you gonna stay relevant? Um, you know, once again, using the notes features of Facebook, all these things that you may not have taken advantage of before, now is the time to do it. Now here's one of our partners, and that's another thing. Look how you can leverage your sponsorships and partners, because really, you don't want partners, sponsors, you want partners. You want people that may be invested in your organization. I'm sure, they're gonna give you $2,500 for you to put their logo on the back of a t-shirt, but think about how you're gonna take that relationship further. So for example, here's uh, Jack Scalisi Wholesale Fruit and Produce, or a partner of ours for one of our events. They're now making their wholesale fruit you know, produce delivery available to people at home. So for us, once again, we know the importance of staying healthy, eating healthy for your immune system. This is the sort of content that we're sharing right now. Um, it's really important, like I said, to stay relevant, but not try to go out of your lane. Um, so here's, you know, like I said, the mental health one that we did um, and promoting these ahead of time um, in, in whatever ways you have possible. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little stop that there now. Um, and that's, you know, really it. You have to be thinking in the here and now, not in the 30 days from now because your strategy is gonna change, what is relevant is gonna change. I mean, we're on the verge of a US domestic air shutdown. I mean, it's, it's gonna happen it, if it hasn't it happened have, already. It should have happened in my opinion. Agree, I mean, here in Florida, the governor came out and said that any flights coming in from New York, those passengers have to be quarantined for 14 days. I mean, this, wow. is, this is a serious situation we have going on in America. But as nonprofit organizations, our services are still needed. What we're providing, to that sector is so um, integral. You know, if you are a food bank, those families mm -hmm. rely upon the services you provide. Schools that give out free and reduced, excuse yeah. me, free and reduced lunches to students, that program still needs to continue. Yeah. Women and men still need their breast health, you know, as, as a concern, especially if you're going through treatment. So we need to be able to stay out there um, and, and be forward in people's minds. And I would say, even if you're not a health charity or a direct services charity, you can still fundraise. I um, got a, an email, like I said, from the Wenham Museum, the little local museum that I'm a member, and I got um, a fundraising appeal from the Community House, which is the local theater. And of course, I'm very connected to that because my daughter does her plays there, but of course I donated. I don't, you know, they were, I, there's an, there's a question somewhere in here and there's definitely a lot of questions, but <laughs> we'll get to some of them. And we have some time, so that's good. But there was a question in there that says, like, how do we communicate that we are literally on the brink of collapse? Now, I don't think that you should say the brink of collapse. I also think that you have to be mindful of your audience and your donors and they're incredibly stressed and fragile right now. And what the community house did, they are literally on the brink of collapse, but that's only because I know, I don't know if they're on the brink of collapse to be fair, but they're, they're struggling because they were already struggling. And then now they can't sell tickets. They can't do their camp. They can't do their childcare that they do. They can't do the youth programs. You know, we're all in the same boat here, but they were honest about it. And they said, we rely on our ticket holders and this is how we make revenue and it's not coming in. And, you know, everybody is now asking for refunds for their tickets. They were just very honest. They weren't bitter. It was a very honest email. And I think that's the best way to do it. So if you look at like, um, 
Amira Incorporated, which of course is one of my favorite charities, but they sent an email. They did a, they're doing a whole fundraising campaign and they were not going to do it. And they said, you know what, we're just going to do it because we scheduled our fundraising campaign for this month and we're just going to see what happens. And they had a really good response because the way they set, they said, look, we are not going to close our doors. They're a shelter. So that is just, I don't even, I can't even possibly imagine what's going on with like, when I used to work at a domestic violence shelter, if we had to close, I, I, it's just, I'm, I just am like speechless. I don't even know. So just writing an email explaining to everybody and they, Amira works with um, women that have been sex trafficked and telling us exactly what they have to do and go through. So I think being honest and human right now and letting people know, but definitely don't say brink of collapse. What do you think, Josh? I wouldn't say yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's not doing it's too stressful. I get stressed thinking about it right now. I'm getting like my blood pressure. Um, you know, it's it's not doom and gloom, but you need to be um, very forward with how much of a crisis situation is, especially in your communication, if you're doing a fundraising appeal. Uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of studying and tuning in to a bunch of webinars last week on people talking about you know, communications in a crisis, clear call to action, single yeah. point, um, and it's not doom and gloom, but letting them know how, you know, this is the time to act. So... I see two, the two questions I'm going to answer. The top one, events that are five or six months out. I mean, Josh, you just went through this um, with Planet Philanthropy. They're not, it's not five months out, but- um, no, it's June. It's June. I think, I think you just, just have to be, you have to be honest. What I, I have, okay, so I'm going to tell you my example. I'm not going to name the organization. I was supposed to speak at a conference Josh knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I called them and I said, this is during, it's like start of March. And I called them and I said, I'm really concerned because I feel like I could get maybe stranded there. I don't know what's going on. Everything's up in the air. Um, I'm really genuinely concerned. And they send an email out to the entire attendee base and said, we are absolutely going forward with this event. This event is going to happen no matter what the government can't shut us down. It was, it was crazy. And then of course the next day that particular state had a ban. We all have bans now, but I'm just saying, try not to say things are going to absolutely happen because we do not know right now. Keep people updated and just be compassionate. Say our, your safety is first and foremost, what we're thinking about. And we're also thinking about how much we want to have this gathering together and how much we all want to be together, but we just don't know right now. And then I, I liked what Planet Philanthropy did. They gave deadlines. They said like, we have to, you know, this is our contract with the hotel. We've, we've got to do it this way. And it was, uh, I think it was very like pragmatic and, and logical. So you got to just tell people, I would never say this is absolutely happening. We don't even, we don't know what is going to happen right now. So say, we'll keep you posted, but your health and safety is of our, is of the utmost importance. Um, so that's the, my answer to the, the question about events that are five or six months out. But in terms of the huge walk in Boston in May, I'm seeing events canceled left and right for June and July. Like, I, I don't know what to say. Um, I don't know what to say about May. I would, I would just once again say, like, I would start looking at virtual, virtual I, I, options yeah. right now. I don't know. I'm, I mean, I, I can't predict the future, but. I, from my perspective, um, I would not be planning an event for May. I would not be planning an event for June. I would look at how you can either postpone that to the fall um, or see what a virtual aspect of your event could be. Um, so we have some people with second Marlene's question. What's Marlene's question? Uh, yeah. I don't know. There's so, there's so many, like, honestly, I can't even keep up with all this stuff. That's no, it's okay. Chat. It's all right. I'm not even, I'm looking at the questions, but for the huge walk in Boston, I don't know what what walk that is. Um, maybe it's the hunger walk. I I know that the uh, marathon was postponed. That's all I know. 
I, I yeah, for if, if you have a huge walk in Boston, May, and, and we had an event in um, two weeks ago, we had our, a big walk in Orlando in Central Florida that we had to postpone 48 hours before the event um, as things were really getting really, really bad um, and what the crisis communications and, and all that looks like. I would be communicating with your um, partners and yeah. uh, notice I didn't say sponsors. I said your partners, your participants, and let them know that, um, you know, the situation and, you know, I'm surprised that the city of Boston would even allow a gathering of that size to happen right now. I don't think they will. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, so I think, so in terms of pivoting to virtual options, Josh, what did you do for your race? Did you just postpone it or did you have a virtual component? We've postponed it. We're not doing a virtual component. I mean, we still had some communications online, um, but we're looking at how we can do a celebration in the fall during Breast yeah. Cancer Awareness Month yep. um, to honor those fundraisers, honor those survivors and thrivers. Uh, but for our style of event where such a large component is that fellowship, that yep. sisterhood and brotherhood of survivors and co-survivors and thrivers, that you know, having everyone to get together in, in a virtual chat like this doesn't really serve the same purpose. That's not no. to say we, we aren't gonna continue doing the sort of Facebook Live content that we're doing and, and looking at other ways that we can provide that. Um, but we're, yeah, we're not making that a virtual event. I mean, for a race, that's impossible to make it into a virtual event unless you can do some component of everyone's, oh, actually, where was that? I saw that um, in the Facebook group. I have to think about it. I saw a, a race that turned virtual and I put it in the nonprofit social media Facebook group. I'm gonna have to take a minute to look for it. But they turned this race into a virtual race where they wanted everybody to compete individually and run individually or run on their treadmill. Um, and then they created digital fundraising pages, um, I think using Network for Good or you could use classy. I mean, the, the real problem here that I'm, I don't have all the answers is that it's going to be difficult changing the culture of an organization that has relied on a race or relied on a walk or relied on in-person events. That's the tricky part. And also just explaining to your donors and fundraisers, the real importance of not giving up on you right now of staying with you and staying with you through all of this. But there are a lot of different virtual ways. You could do a dance-a-thon, you could do a, you know, everyone could read a poem in their house. I don't know. There's, there's, I think there's a cook, a cook off. I saw a virtual potluck, which I thought was hilarious <laughs> where everyone just kind of made their own dish and then sort of like shared recipes. Um, I've seen virtual, like people having mini dance-a-thons in their house with their kids. I've seen, I've gotten invitations to quite a few of these, um, all either through Facebook Live, YouTube Live, um, or Zoom. But get together with your committee, because I'm assuming if it's a big event, you're going to have a committee. Right. And the very first thing you need to do is like, what are our goals for this event that we absolutely have to hit? And then thinking about ways that you can incorporate virtual events. We just have to get super creative. I mean, this is a completely unprecedented time and we just have to get super, super creative. And that's why I created that Google Drive. So if you have examples, please send them to me. I'm gonna actually put my email. Um, send me examples at julia at jcsocialmarketing.com. I want this to be sort of a clearinghouse for us all to get inspired. And I've been putting Facebook Live examples in there. I've been putting fundraising appeal letters in there, all related um, to COVID-19. So I think in terms of asking people to register for an event right now, you're not going to get registrations. I, like you're Josh and I, we wanted, you're not gonna, you're no, not we wanted to have the, um, the nonprofit social media summit we were ready to like pull the trigger on it. Um, April, April, August, 27th. it's supposed to be August 27th and 28th. And there's absolutely no way that I can be asking people to purchase tickets, register, do anything right. Uh, register for a physical event right now. Right. Um, because so much is up in the air and people don't know 
it's hour by hour by hour. So you just have to take it hour by hour. And maybe what I would do actually for an event like that is I would have a weekly update that people can subscribe to or have a weekly Facebook live, even if it's two minutes that just says, this is where we are. This is what our plan is. And we'd welcome all of your ideas and plans and maybe form like a virtual committee um, of ambassadors, of donors, of fundraisers, of people in the community to brainstorm some ideas of how to take the event virtual. So that's kind of what I would do. You know, norm normally this is the time that I would say, hey, Julia, where am I going to see you next? And where are we going to be speaking next? But unfortunately, um, it's right here. So if you do want to stay connected with Julia and I, the best way is to go to yeah. um, our Facebook group, nonprofitsocialmedianerds.com. That'll take you right to that Facebook group. Uh, it is a growing, I think we're at about 9,000 or so members mm -hmm. uh, of that group now. And it's great for sharing, um, you know, digital storytelling and questions. You know, the really that focus is in that communications fundraising, you know, vein. Sometimes people bring in some other questions, but a majority of that conversation is tied around digital communication, storytelling, and fundraising for your nonprofit. So check us out, nonprofitsocialmedianerds.com. Um, Julia, this has been great. You know, yes. I really do appreciate you taking the time today to, to get on here. Um, you know, for the 342 participants that we have on, for those watching on Facebook Live, there were tons of uh, questions in here. Julia does a I great know. job of um, recapping those in a blog post. So be on the lookout for those questions. Uh, you can subscribe to Julia's blog on her website at juliacsocialmarketing.com. Did I get that right? No, JC Social Marketing. Oh, <laughs> close. Close. There's so many C's and so many. Yes. Because my Twitter is Julia C Social. So yeah, it gets confusing. Uh, but um, but once again, and I'm gonna, thanks. I'll send an email out to everybody um, that registered via Zoom. Facebook Live people, yeah. you can send me your email if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but but like I said, Julia's going to go through the chat. She's going to pull out some great questions. She'll go in the Q&A. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We will be doing these, um, you know, we more frequently, you know, we had the, the nonprofit nerds have kind of uh, slacked off there for a little because yeah. we get busy. I mean, yeah, this busy. is just, you know, a passion project of ours, um, but we do enjoy it so much. And, and we're glad that everyone was able to tune in. If this was your first time, if this was your 50th time, checking out the nerds, we're yeah. here for you. Uh, okay. We're all going through this together. Thank you. And yeah, and definitely join the group because we're going to be doing just some straight up Q and A's um, in the Facebook group. Um, Monday is 430. Monday's I know I still need to talk about that because I'm struggling like everyone else with figuring out my schedule because every day is a different day. It's so hard. Right. Like every day is something different, but yeah, right now it's Mondays at 430, but we'll see if that. We'll see what happens. We'll see what, we'll go hour by hour right now. <laughs> but everyone will, um, if you're on Zoom, you'll get an email. If you're on Facebook Live, uh, I'll post it in the comments of the Facebook Live. So I really just want to end with saying that all of you are doing the absolute best you can. And I really recommend you trusting your gut this time around. If you think you shouldn't send that post, if it just doesn't feel right to you, wait on it for 24 hours. You know, it's, it's not imperative, but I don't want you to think that you can't communicate during this time. Your audience needs you. They need you. They need the information that you can provide. They need your perspective. They need your thought leadership. Like you are needed. You are desperately needed. So don't just, you know, it's tempting to just want to crawl back into bed, which I think we all want to do at least once a day, but you've got this hang in there. And yeah, we will see you soon. Bye. All right, take care. Bye, everybody.